In this video, we'll go over how IRIS works, its theory of operation, and signal flow. IRIS is a sample and subtract instrument, which means it starts with a sampled waveform and then applies subtractive synthesis tools to it, like envelopes and filters. There's one exception to that, which is the sub-oscillator. That begins with a raw, generated waveform. We'll get into that later. Now, each patch or preset can have up to four waveforms, the three samples plus the sub-oscillator. Now, at the moment, we're just seeing the spectrogram for pool, or voice, number one. Now, you can see this by the fact that the number one light is on in the corner. Now, you can switch the spectrogram to see the others by clicking on their respective buttons. Or, you can open the All view to get an overview. Now, we can still zoom each spectrogram individually. And we can still crossfade between the spectrogram and waveform views. All right, let's load up a less complex sound and take a closer look at exactly how the spectrogram works. Open the preset browser, select the keys category, and scroll down to Cave Story Glory. And if you want, you can click on some of the other nearby patches and you'll see how many voices they have by how many of the lines are used. Okay, select Cave Story Glory. Now select the Pool 1 view, and let's move the view slider all the way to the right so that we're seeing just the spectrogram. Finally, click on the Select None tool to clear all of the filters off the waveform. Okay, now let's just play the basic sound. And notice how the A2 is pointed out on the keyboard. That's telling us that the sound was originally sampled and mapped to the A2 key. So. By using A2 for playback, we should hear the sound exactly as it was sampled. Okay, now we can start dipping into this sound to create our own version. We'll go over all the tools in detail in Chapter 4, but for now, take the lasso tool and draw a circle around some of the middle of the spectrogram. Okay, not a fantastic circle, but... The point is that the area inside this shape is now the only stuff that we're going to hear. And the vertical dotted lines show the start and stop point. And look at the waveform overview at the top. It also shows you which section is active. And this is what it sounds like. So what was a scary sound effect could almost be played like a flute. Now let's fade some of the waveform view back in just for reference. And we'll click the Clear All button again. Let's try another quick example. Take the Frequency Select tool, which is the one right above the lasso, and highlight a narrow band of harmonics towards the top of the spectrogram. And now our flute has become a laser beam. So if we clear all again, and let's just go back to the spectrogram, what the display is showing us is really three pieces of information. From left to right is time, from top to bottom is frequency, and the color is volume. So we can tell that the original sample here is about 10 seconds long and has a lot of low frequency content. Now, the wavy horizontal lines are basically the harmonics in this sound. So if you took the frequency select tool again and you highlight just the heavy white lines, you will get a much more musical quality to the sound. Now, you could easily play chords with this selection. But if we clear all again and select just dark areas, which are mostly enharmonic frequencies, we're going to get something which is much more dissonant, much more atmospheric. Playing chords with this selection would sound like the inside of an alien spacecraft. But just for fun, we can use the lasso tool, and we can go here and draw in some high-frequency blips, which should sound like the alien scanner. Alright, that's a little corny, I admit. 
But the point is that you can begin to program Iris as much with your eyes as with your ears. And for sound designers in particular, this workflow opens up a ton of possibilities. Okay, let's clear all one more time and demonstrate what the sample and subtract concept is all about. Select a few of the white lines again to create a somewhat musical sound. And now that we have the frequencies and harmonics picked out, we can begin to use traditional synthesizer tools like the low frequency oscillator. And if you want to save your masterpiece for all time, open the Save menu at the top of the global panel, pick out a category for it, and then type in your name. Okay, now that you have the general concept, Let's take a more in-depth look at each panel, starting with the global panel, which is coming up in Chapter 3.